Some of his career highlights include winning more than 1,200 games, winning three national championships at Cal Poly Pomona, voted coach of the decade for the 1970s, voted professor of the year at Cal Poly, USA team head coach in 75 and 80, USA Olympic pitching coach in 84, inducted into the College Hall of Fame, received the Lefty Gomez Honor Award. He has long, long been recognized as one of the outstanding teachers and the clinicians. He's had great influence in baseball with over 100 high school, college, and college coaches in the profession. He has sent more than 100 people into professional baseball, and he's been a favorite clinician for years and years at the ABCA clinics. His wisdom goes far beyond the baseball field. We are indeed fortunate to have Coach John Scalinas with us today. Thanks. He left out the most important of all. I lost more games than anybody. <laughs> True. True. Hey, you young coaches, you're probably wondering why he's bringing an old fogey up here like me to talk to you young coaches. Well, I'm going to tell you why. I don't want that Lagos, if he's here, Garakos, or Riskus, to explain what I'm saying. Keep quiet. Let these guys figure out what I'm talking about. Here's why. Puisa Imona. Puime Faise. All right, we got them G-men in there. They can figure it out. They know what I'm talking about. But can you guys figure out what I'm talking about? I'm talking about you, and I'm talking about me. Now, let me interpret it. Puisa, where you are, I have been. Where I am, you will be. You're going to be over the hill someday. True. True. Maybe. You listen to that, Kindle? I got to say amen to what that guy said. All the way around, he did a great job. If you don't listen to him, you don't listen to what I got to say, you might not hit 50. Serious. People, hey. Let me say something. I don't want to offend the football coaches, the basketball coaches, the soccer coaches. But I want to tell you about baseball. The toughest game to play. Did you guys hear me? Toughest game to play. And you guys as coaches have got to understand that. The better understanding you have of the game of baseball, the better you're going to be able to handle adversity and last longer, longevity. Toughest game to play. The skills that are involved. The skills that are involved. Oh, man. Not like any other sport, people. And on top of that, the mental discipline that's involved in baseball. No other sport can compare to it. No question about it. You coaches have got to understand that. You coaches have got to understand that deal. Tough game, people. Also, most important, the only team game that parallels everyday living is baseball. The only game. No question about it. Now, on top of that, as coaches, where can you hide a guy on this game? Huh? Anybody in the house? Stand up and let us know. Huh? Hey, Pepe, 
can they have? Can they have them in Italy? Where's that Jules? You got them from all over the world here. Jules, can they have them in Holland? They can't even have them in Siberia. You can't have them. Hey, I was in football 25 years. Can't hide them. Try and remember. Guy not very good. Put him on the left side. Tell him to get in somebody's way and run to the right. <laughs> you got a guy on defense. Put him in the middle. Put a good linebacker behind him to back him up. Can you do that in baseball? Huh? Put a good left fielder in back of your shortstop to back him up? Forget it. Or you got a putz on third baseman, feels the ball, talks to the shortstop to throw the guy out. <laughs> Can't do it. No Scalinus is running. <laughs> Basketball, soccer. Great games, don't get me wrong, people. Hey, let me tell you a true story. This is before the war, so we're going back. But one of, I went to Manual Arts High School in the L.A. City here. Great high school, one of the best. Today, you got to go through a metal detector to get in there. It's ridiculous. But anyway, they had an outstanding basketball coach, Ching Doom. One of the basketball tell players was telling me the story. They had a guy, Toasty Johnson, he was hot. Those hands, two hands. He was hot the first half. They go in for a halftime talk, the locker room. This is what Ching Doom said at halftime. Miller, second half, give the ball to Toasty. Jonesy, second half, give the ball to Toasty. Jackson, second half, give the ball to Toasty. Lindsay, second half, give the ball to Toasty. Then as they were walking out, <clears throat> Ching says, oh, what are we going to do, boys? And everybody together, give the ball to Toasty. So they go on with that second half, they give the ball to Tosi, and what do you think happened? They won the game. <laughs> hey, now let's put that in baseball. You got Tosi's got a hot bat. Now what are you going to do? No, no, this inning, I want you to give your bat to Tosi. <laughs> get it. Hey, you're time to hit, buddy. You got to hit. Or you're done. There's somebody else in there. Can't do that. Can't do that. Hey, I was asked the question, hey, if you had to do it all over again, Scalinus, what would you do? My answer, I'd spend more time on the imagination and visualization. Now, I realize a lot of them have been talking about it. Hey, if you guys are not utilizing that, you're missing the boat. And I don't mean the banana boat, you're missing the Queen Mary. That's <laughs> most important, people, most important. How does that go? And nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. You know who said that? The Almighty said that. Most important. Imagination, more important than knowledge. Einstein said that. Boy, I'm telling you, can you utilize that deal? Imagine the situation and then see yourself doing it? I told you about that Williams, Ron Dell, and other clinics. I'll tell you another one. I haven't brought it up. And Coach Osaki reminded me when I was with, uh, working with the Olympic team of the pitchers. I remember this article that was in Sports Illustrated on Tom Seaver. And it tells this story beginning of the season when he was pitching for the Mets. They got rained out. He was supposed to pitch. They come back to New York. Instead of him going home, <coughs> excuse me, he went to the clubhouse, got a couple of bucket of balls, went out to the bullpen. And the way they described it, they just had a light there by the parking lot. And that's Seavers out there all by himself. Never had a catcher. Had a net in back of home plate, proceeded to pitch his game. How did he pitch? Huh? Visualize the hitter up there. Okay. Could see the target, see it go there, pitch. 
the visualization imagination. I don't know where we're in, Chicago somewhere. You know, that, boy, that Olympic team, they were like grass. They were all over all these different cities. But I remember Seaver was there. I got a hold of him. Hey, is that a true story? True story. True story. It's a good one for the pitchers, people. Good one for the pitchers. I want to hit five essentials of a major league manager. Maybe you heard about them. I'm going to bring them up into here. Five essentials of a major league manager. Number one, managing people. Managing people. Now, you say, major league manager, hey, I don't give a kid you're coaching Little League, you're coaching Pony League, you're coaching Colt League, high school, JC, college, huh? minor league manager, big league manager, you're managing people. Got to remember the three C's in managing people. Communication, consistency, and control. Those are the big three. You got to be able to communicate. And don't forget that one-on-one. -on -one. One on one, people. A lot of times you talk to the whole ball club, might say something maybe that's a little negative. Well, he's talking about McGee, he's not talking about me. But when you're on that one on one, buddy, hey, he's talking to me. All right, the other two, let me put it in, uh, give you a situation here. This coach has got a kid hitting six and seven eighths. On the weekend, he gets student tattooed, comes to school on Monday. Hey, what happened to you? Man, you embarrassed the ball club. You make us all look like we're a bunch of bottle jockeys on this ball club. You're gone. You're gone. Two weeks later, two weeks later, best hitter. Gee, the guy driving in all the runs, hitting about 480. He gets student tattooed, and what does he do? Brings it to a team vote. Well, what is the team going to do? They're a good friend? Good ball player? They're not going to run him off. So what happened? Number one, hey, Kendall brought that up too. Not consistent. And who's running the ball club? Who's running the ball club? You guys better take that note on that deal, okay? The second deal, judging talent. Most important, some guys can't scout sand on the Sahara Desert. You guys, hey, listen, listen, this is more, if you have trouble, if you have trouble, utilize people for crying out loud that can help you out. When I came from Pepperdine to Cal Poly, I used to send ball players over there to Bill Arce at CMC and over to Riscus there at Pomona. Hey, scrimmage against those guys, they'd help me out. It evaluate for me. Did a great job for me. Utilize people. What about scouts in the area? This is most important. And don't forget, people, hey, what's in here, too? You know, ability, what's in here, too? All right, number three, teaching and preparation. That's what you're here for. Listen, Kendall, ex-big league ball player. And what is he telling you guys? Go to clinics. He keeps going to clinics. He don't have to go for crying out loud with a reputation that guy has, but he's gone because he knows it's going to help him be a better coach. No question about it. That's what these clinics are for, people. Gee, they got, hey, you guys are fortunate. I brought it up before, bring it up again. Gee, when I first started after World War II, uh, hey, I learned from that Reichel. I learned from that Dato. I learned from that Biden. I learned from that Dutch, Don Edwards are going to put him in. These guys help me out. You guys have got all these outstanding speakers. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. All right, the next one, dealing with the media. You say, for crying out loud, they didn't know we're playing. But let me tell you something, dealing with the media. Hey, dealing with the administration and dealing with parents. You got that? I mean, another story on Ching Doom. Hey, he coached baseball and he coached basketball. Outstanding coach. After the war, I got this from the athletic director, East LA JC. 
He coached baseball there. I got this from the AD. What happened one day? One of the fathers came out. Coach, how, kid, how come my kids are not playing? See, he was first string in Colt League, first string in high school. He's riding the pines now. What's the problem? But hey, Ching Doom had it right down there. The kid we got in there hits better, feels better, runs better, got a better arm. Had it right down. The ball players knew it. So what does the old man do? He goes to the president of the college. Gives him a haircut and a shave on how good his kid is. <laughs> so what does the president do? True story. Calls in Ching Doom. Coach, how come this kid is not playing? So Ching Doom proceeds to tell him the other guy's better. Gave him the whole deal on that. So what does the president say? Play him, Ching. Play him anyway. Put him in there. Put him in there. What does Ching Doom say? OK, Mr. President, I'm going to play him, but I'm going back and tell that ball club you're making the lineup from now on. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that stopped that. Hey, the last deal, handling pictures. Most important, you people, find out all you can about pitching. All you can about pitching, and you've got some outstanding speakers. All you can, and you don't have to be an ex-pitcher to handle pitchers, OK? All right, I want to get into these. Uh, did you guys get that handout? The eight lessons, uh, the eight lessons of baseball. Hey, these eight lessons, you don't find them in any other sport. You find some of them, but these are the eight basic lessons of baseball. No question about it, all right? Number one, handling failure. No, no, detail, hey, failing, you got to be able to handle it. You got to be able to handle it. I got down in there like keywords, you know, and these keywords can go for any of them, okay? Number two, we've got what? Handling fear. Fear of making a mistake, fear of striking out, and so forth. The game, the game people, the nature of the game involves these lessons. Just by playing the game. Just by playing the game. This is why I hate to say it, most important sport is baseball. Because all these parallel everyday living. Want to prepare kids to be good citizens? This is it. Play the game of baseball. Listen. Hey, I'm in favor. Oh, I don't give a kick. You're talking about high school, JC, college. You should be a freshman team, a JV team, and a varsity team. I'm not saying everybody's going to play varsity, but you got them playing the game because they're going to learn. They're going to learn. These lessons here, hey, you might think I'm nuts, but I got news for you. I know the value of the game to help young people. Now you got these administrators, they don't know the goalposts from third base. And they're making these decisions. And I, I, listen, you guys are in a tough spot. Cut, cut, cut. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, you got that frustration? What game is more frustrating than baseball? Huh? See, all the games are, yeah, but not like baseball. <laughs> well, you see some guys, they fight frustration. Want to fight. Hey, remember this, regardless the score, keep your poise. Regardless the score, keep your poise. Regardless the score, keep your poise. I don't give a kick if you're knocking somebody's jocks off or you're getting your jocks knocked off. Huh? Keep your poise. Most important. Loneliness. What game is more lonely than baseball? You might maybe get three fly balls out there, the whole ball game, or three or four ground balls. 
You got to keep your mind occupied. Huh? The anathema of a baseball player is leisure time. You know what that means? Hey, I never made that, made that dean's list, but I know what that means. The anathema, the curse, the curse of a ball player, leisure time. You got to keep occupied. You got to keep focused in. You hear it all the time. Hey, that's within the realm of possibility. Some guys, you got that pitcher out there making a career out of it between pitches. Then he shakes off three signs. Then he throws a ball. Then he's got seven guys picking their nose out there. It's tough. You got to be, hey, the ball's going to be hit to me. You're expecting the ball to be hit, see how the pitcher's pitching, what type of a hitter, and so forth. You got to keep yourself occupied. Okay? The slump. Learn how to handle the slump. Don't let the slump make you quit. And all these are inevitable, people. That's the point. They're all inevitable. Don't let them make you quit. And what do you got in here? Making adjustments. You got to make adjustments. Let me tell you a story. I had a guy, hey listen, this guy was on the Dean's List. I wasn't talking to some dummy. And I was on this one-on-one -on -one deal, talking in this classroom. True story. And this guy had that hairpin swing. He had hit one nine miles about once a month. I'm trying to get him to what? Adjust. Gee, adjust. Adjust, Mills, adjust. Put your hands up, swing down, hit ground balls. All I talk to him about adjust. So we're sitting in this classroom by a window. Okay? Now you got a picture of a window here. It's a sliding window. Okay? And it was open about maybe two, three inches at the end. So we're sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear this. Bzzz, bzzz. Beep, beep. I look and I see this big fly. Beep, 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 beep. So I said, Mills, I says, check that fly. <laughs> he thought it was nuts. So we were both sitting there looking at the fly. True story. Hey. Beep, beep, beep. Boom, it hit, hit the opening, out he went. I says, hey, Mills, what was that fly trying to do? Trying to get out. Trying to get out. I says, Mills, if that fly had your brain as far as hitting, this is what would happen. <laughs> True. True. Hey. Did I? Point across. Did I get I took advantage of that. True story. I'll never forget that. Hey, the guy, the guy became a Navy pilot for I wasn't talking to some dummy. I'm not kidding you. Hey, the last deal here. Developing control. Hey, this is the most important. You learn it. Hey, in all sports, football, basketball, baseball, soccer. Hey, the good athlete learns to control himself or herself. You got that point? Now, the key on all this, people, the key is what? You learn all these things between the lines. You guys as coaches have got to get this point across. What you learn between the lines, excuse me, take it outside of the lines and utilize it outside of the lines. Otherwise, you're playing the game in vain. I remember Colfax made the statement, oh, I never let anything outside of the ballpark cause me to foul up in the ballpark. He watched himself. I hate to bring this up, people, but it's true. And you got to get it across. Magic Johnson. Hey, who had better control between the lines than that guy? Fantastic. Outside of the lines, he couldn't control that thing in his pants, and you guys know what happened. I'm not kidding you, people. We're doing a lousy job. One of the big problems, no control. No control. Yet you teach control between the lines. Guy can't control a ball. I don't give a kick. 
throw the ball through the Bank of America. Well, you can't lose a guy. Got to get the ball over the plate. Can't control a bat. You couldn't hit me if I'm standing on home plate. You can't control your body. How are you going to feel the ball? You zig, the ball zigs, you're all right. But when you zig and it zags, forget it. You learn control and get them to utilize it outside of the lines. So this is all most important. All right. Say, so what's this stuff here? You got three types of ball players. I don't give a kick what you're saying. You're dealing with three types of ball players. You got to understand this. You got the marshmallows, the jelly beans, and the hard rock. Now, what this is, here's the way you check them out. How do they handle the eight lessons? Any one of these, now I'm going to demonstrate. Now, you guys back there might have a tough time seeing, but I can't help it. <laughs> These guys who got the box seats are all right. Hey, now the, the fire here represents any one of the eight lessons, okay? That's what this, in other words, hey, the fire represents failure, represents fear, frustration, any of these, a slump. All right. Let's check the marshmallow. You guys all looking? Did that take long? Huh? Got to him right away. Trying to get a point across in here. Huh? It gets to the marshmallow right away. You can spot. These guys are easy to spot. Easy to spot. Now, the jelly bean, you got to scrutinize these guys. I'll tell you why. Hey, the jelly bean, I'll leave them up here. You guys don't believe me? Come up and check them out. Hard on the outside. What's it got in the inside? Puss. <laughs> check it out. Check it out. I can eat it alive. Check it out. The point here. Just tastes as good. A little bit more heat, and this guy will melt too. That's my point. Gee, you might think this guy's all right. Can I can I get Crying out loud. Mm -mm. Watch. You guys see that? The box seats can probably see it. See it there? Huh? Not quite. <laughs> All right. Hey, give it a little more heat. There it is. There it is. See it melting? All right, let's go to the hard rock. That was a pretty good jelly bean. <laughs> well, some guys are that way. <laughs> hey, the hard rock comes at different sizes. Okay, I don't have to be six foot four, 250. Could be a little guy. <laughs> right away it went out. Did you see that? Did you see that? Try it again. I'll try it all the way around. Try it again. Okay. 
Who's in command? Huh? Who's in command? This is what you guys are coaching, trying to coach. This is what you're coaching. Okay? Hard rock. Now, let me give you a tip. We all looking for ability. No question about it. You got to have some ability. But you got a hard rock. You spot, spot a guy that's hard rock. Ability, not very good. Keep him. Keep him. You know why? These guys are the stability of the ball club. You got to have them. If you don't have any, you got a ball club with marshmallows and jelly beans, true, you'll be in the nut house. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Look for the hard and try to develop the hard rocks, people. Work on developing hard rocks. All right, I want to finish up. Finish up into here. Thumbnail philosophy. Hey, you latch on to the most important words, you're in great shape, and eliminate the worst words. This is what it's all about. Hey, you don't have to make a career out of it. You don't have to make a career out of it. Huh? Read all the books you want. I'm going to give it to you here in about 60 seconds. Five most important words, surround yourself with good people. Four most important words, take care of yourself. Three most important words, class, character, and concern. Two most important words, thank you. Single most important word, we. Least most important word, I. Two worst words, I quit. Three worst words, I don't care. Four worst words, everybody's doing it. And the five worst words, let somebody else do it. Eliminate those worst words, latch on to the most important words. And the most important of all is the first one, surround yourself with good people. First of all, surround yourself with the Almighty. The rest will take care of itself. Hey, you got to remember, people, you got good people. Your job as a coach, your job as a coach is to surround those ball players with good people. You got a donkey? Hey, I'm not saying don't work with him. Work with that guy. But it gets to the point, like the good book says, and neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Hey, if it comes to that point, then you got to go to Scalina Psychology. Get rid of them. Because <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, hey, spread to the rest of the ball club. That's your job. Because each guy, just like that Kindle says, uh, he's learning. You learn from your ball players. They're learning from you. What kind of an influence are you on your ball club? Plus the ball players. You've got to let them know those guys are an influence. They're an influence. Everybody's an influence. Consciously or subconsciously. Everybody in here, me, everybody, you are the way you are due to influence. I don't give a kid to give you all that party Google talk they want, but it's due to influence. And you're influenced how? What you see, what you hear, and what you read. Influence. Let me tell you what happened. Another story here. Happened. I'm coaching. I come and sit in the dugout. We're out in the field. The bat boy comes and sits next to me. About 12 year old bat boy. It happened a few years back. I'll never forget it. And, you know. So I cross my legs. You guys can't see back there. I cross my legs. As I cross my legs, I, I just happened to glance. I saw the kid cross his legs. Oh, this kind of struck me. So I go like this, and I'm cheating as though I'm checking him. Kid did the same thing. I keep checking out. Took my hat off, went through here. Kid did the same thing. I'm going to give him the ultimate test. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> he did the same thing. Two. 
I had that kid right by the schnauzola. Hey, I had him, people. And you guys, the, the, the influence today, how are you guys influencing? How? What? Hey, I don't know you guys. I happened to look at TV here about a week ago, and they had this Michael Jackson on TV. I didn't know. I don't follow that guy. But there's on the news, and he's going through his dance. I thought the guy had the jock itch. <laughs> you ever watch that day? You ever watch that day? And this guy is influencing the kids. I couldn't believe it. I might be living in 1935, but I that is influencing these kids. I was about going to send him some jock itch powder, but the guy's a millionaire. I get it. Hey, remember, hey, you got a donkey? I told you, work with him. Work with him, but don't make a career out of it. Christ Almighty is trying to send us a message. He chose 12 apostles. One was a donkey. Huh? But that was in Scripture. It don't have to be with you. But I got news for you. He rose the third day, but your ball club won't rise the third day, but it's gone. And maybe even you too. Well, as they say in Japan, Zem Zem Arima Zem, that is all, there ain't no more. God bless you. Hey, keep them hustling. Keep them hustling. Okay? Thank you.